Hello? Hello? Hello. What's wrong? Um, I'm just filming uh, this documentary thing that I have to do, and I think a little bit of a moment. Oh. Oh, how come you have to do that? Um, because I'm trying to bridge the gap between my new music and my old music so I'm just gonna I'm doing like a three part video series kind of telling everyone what I've been up to and what's been going on oh, I'm excited for you I want to see it you will get to yay <sighs> are you doing okay then yeah it was just pretty emotional yeah it's just little bits at a time hey because if you really fully digest the full thing it's just too hard for us sometimes yeah so i could start with oh i've been singing since i was three and um was on stage by four which is all true i'm not katie perry i'm not taylor swift i don't really think people care what i was doing when i was young yet but uh, I think there are some people that are probably wondering what's been going on with me in the last little while and what's to come, and uh, that's what I'm going to tell you about. Hey, it's AIM. This has been my journey. I wanted to share with you the highs and lows, the rock bottoms, and the hopes and dreams that I have for the future. Singing weddings, international stages, experiencing loss, corruption, and, well, honestly, everything in between. Even a secret identity. Join me on the journey to now. How to start, how to start. Probably sit up a little bit, have better posture. Don't show the wine glass that you're drinking. This is Ellie. I got Ellie last February. She's a rescue. <laughs> and she's been the love of my life for the last year. If you're annoyed, bark twice. If you love your life, say nothing. Let's go back to, I think, 2014. A little bit of a trip to LA, um, met with some pretty big deals there, and actually was close to in the works of signing a deal, didn't go through. So I was 19 at the time when that happened, I ended up signing my first record deal to a Canadian-based company that was an imprint label with Sony Music, so we had the distribution from Sony. I was on my way, that's what I kind of thought. I knew that there was going to be a lot of work, but I kind of thought, like, I'm just going to keep going up from here. Once you're signed, I knew there's always ups and downs, but you're just going to keep progressing. You're just going to keep getting better. You're going to keep getting more contacts and doing bigger things and getting more radio play. <laughs> I did do pretty well. Released a EP, had seven songs. I solo wrote all of the songs except for one of them. I released an additional single to radio um, after my EP, it was called The Whiskey Won't Fix Me, it was, that one actually went top 50 in Canada, it was a duet that I sang with a label mate at the time, Tristan Horncastle, he's awesome, I think he could have done better, um, and I can say that kind of with confidence because Reba McIntyre and her record label and her manager uh, really loved it and wanted to cut it for Reba's album. Turned out she decided to do a gospel album instead. Fix Me is not really gospel. Unless you say, I know the whiskey won't fix me, but a little bit of God will. Eh? Huh? Reba? Come on. You know, when I first got signed, I didn't really know anything about the business side of music. I'm really hard on myself and I just felt like I needed to make this work. I had to. This morning is a very special guest. Her name is Amy Metcalf. Good morning, Amy. Hi there. It's called Fairy Tale, which is the opposite of a fairy tale. Sometimes I think we have perceptions of what we think 
things are going to go like, well, you know, you kind of have these perceptions of what you want things to play out like to be, and it doesn't always happen. I was putting everything into my music, and, you know, I thought that if I did everything that I possibly could, that that meant that it was going to go exactly how I wanted it to. I didn't know when I started out that not every record label pays for everything, so when I found out I had to pay for things, I started doing graphics by myself, taught myself how to code for websites, just to try to save money, and I'm sure radio could tell. From the outside looking in, I'm sure people thought, oh, she's with a record label, she's covered. But that just wasn't the case, and you know, I was trying so hard that it got to the point where I got a little bit burnt out. You know, there were a lot of political games that people didn't know about. There were lines that were crossed that as a young woman in a new industry, I had no idea how to navigate. I would never take anything back because I learned so much and there were a lot of great things that I got out of my first album and I learned so much and met so many amazing people and I am really thankful for that. I think a lot of people get to hear you know the success stories about musicians but they don't really hear a lot about just somebody who's living it right now you only hear about it after someone's been huge and it just kind of hits different but you know every song that I wrote on that EP my first album did mean something to me I wrote them myself so it was a part of my heart and it's a big learning curve as an artist to face rejection or for things not to reach the height of where you want them to go um, so it was tough at times I flew home from Vancouver where I was living at the time for a gig in Camrose, Alberta met the person who was running the gig, his name was Corey. Him and I went out for dinner um, in between my sets and we got to talking and we just both really connected. I told him that I didn't have a manager and I was like, would you be into managing? And, and he said, well, I don't know. You know, I used to manage uh, before I got into doing festival and gigs. I said, okay, well, I really want a manager, so even if you won't commit, will you like help me out with some decisions? And manager artist relationship is really unique, and uh, it takes a certain type of person to manage artists properly and successfully, and you know, keep them in line without shattering them or dimming their brightness, you know. And I just knew that Corey was going to be that person for me. I was so excited. I had a manager, and I had someone that could go along with me wherever I ended up and someone that was going to champion for me. So I went from singing songs that I wrote in my basement thinking no one would hear them to radio tours, signing my first record deal, playing international stages, hosting the Alberta Country Music Awards. You know, I had a lot of amazing experiences in country music and I have a lot of thanks to give to a lot of people for that and my label is one of them. I don't want you to take away from this episode that I don't appreciate the things that I did get to do because I did get to do a lot of good things. It was just time for me to walk away and start a new journey. So it kind of, I kind of freaked out a bit and I decided to do what any person that doesn't know what to do is and I hid. I got accepted into this crazy once in a lifetime opportunity contest. I had a plan if I didn't win and I had a plan if I did. forward, back to square one, back to ground zero. How are you going to build yourself up this timing? What's your big plan to keep things going?